Hey guys, let's talk about mission editor options for the HIP, because there are quite a few and they do have some different impacts to the helicopter and its engine efficiency and its overall weight. So I've placed a helicopter here on a landing pad and if we just click on it, we get the usual options that we have for most planes and helicopters. And we're gonna go to the payload tab. And on the payload tab, you can set your payload, make a new one, whatever you wanna do. But you can also disable the hard points entirely, and there's this checkbox here for external hard points. If you turn that off, you're saving 401 kilograms. You can see the weight gets reflected there just by turning off. That's 3% of your maximum weight just by turning off the external hard points. So if you know you're not flying a combat mission and you're not going to need weapons, it's a good way to save some weight and increase your engine efficiency. Also on this tab is the rope length. This is for sling loading, which defaults to the middle value of 49.2. It can move, but it only snaps to different presets of 65, 82, and 98 feet on the longer side. So if you wanted a long line, you can go almost 100 feet long. And then on the short side, you can go down to 32 or 16.4 for a short line. Now I've found if you've watched my sling lining video that there seems to be a bug with these, especially if you have multiple helicopters in the mission where the rope length will stretch out to 100 regardless of the setting you've put it on. So this may or may not actually be helpful to you. And most people, I think, just leave it on the default. I'm not going to pretend to know when exactly you need the longer versus the shorter line. I'll leave that to you guys to research for your missions. But the option is there. Now, the only other things that we have are all on the additional properties tab way at the end here. So we'll click on that and we have a few different things that we can put on or take off or update or change or whatever. So one by one, let's go through them. First one is exhaust IR suppressors. These are uh, attached to the exhaust port or the exhaust pipe on the side and both sides of the helicopter. And what they do is reduce your IR infrared signature by about 50%. So what this means is that an infrared missile like a SAM launcher from another aircraft should have a harder time tracking and locking onto you, especially if you're deploying flares and it should make it more possible for you to get through a SAM infested area. So if there's going to be IR threats in your mission, you're going to want these, but if there won't be, you should turn these off. They will affect your engine efficiency. They do draw engine power because it has to work harder to push the exhaust out through these filters, much like uh, a modern emission system in a passenger vehicle versus, you know, with the emission system intact versus a straight pipe exhaust, for example. So our next option is the remaining service life of the left and right engine. So according to the manual, 90% corresponds to a brand new helicopter straight from the factory. 100% would be for the testing on a stand with the engine only inside the factory. So once they hook it up to the rest of the powertrain, the transmission and the rotor assembly and everything, it loses about 10% of the efficiency, if I'm understanding this correctly. You can set it lower than that if you wanted to simulate an older helicopter that's had a longer service life or is in general disrepair. And if you play the spring tension campaign included with the hip, you will find that there is a mission where you have to do that. Uh, according to the manual, 75% would correspond to a main rotor RPM dropping at a collective of 11.5 degrees. So if you tried to raise the collective beyond that, main rotor RPM would drop and you'd fall out of the sky, lose your generators and so on. So it limits how much collective you can pull. If you go lower than that, 50% uh, corresponds to an RPM drop at 5% collective or five degrees, sorry, it would not be possible to fly with those engines. So your effective range is really above 50%, probably more like 60 to 90% would be your effective range for these values if you wanted to simulate an older helicopter with reduced power. Uh, the next one is additional armor. So this is armor plating that will be found around certain parts of a helicopter to protect both the crew and certain sensitive parts of the helicopter to keep them alive longer and keep the bird in the air longer. Now the armor has a weight of 419 kilograms. So much like with the hard points, if you're not doing a combat mission, if there's no threat in your mission, it's logistics only or transport or something along those lines, take that off, save your pilot some weight because that's pretty significant. Um, the next one, that'll be again, another 3% or so of the helicopter's max weight. The next one is the cargo half door. Now the cargo half doors are the big doors at the back and they can be opened with a hotkey in game and you can have a look in the cargo area of the helicopter. Now you can also put gunners back here and the back gunner in the back will pop open this little hatch here and shoot from the back. But if you happen to load him up with the doors open, then this happens. 
And he gets stuck like that because you can't close the door once you have the gunner mounted there. So he's just like that forever. Now you can also take the doors right off entirely. And then it just looks like this. And from the side. And it saves you some weight. And looks a bit funny. So those are your clamshell doors. They'll typically be left on by most mission makers unless you have a reason to take them off. They do have weight. They weigh 130 kilograms which is not nearly as much as the armor and the hard points, but it's still something to consider, especially if you're going to be flying a heavy load in the mountains, uh, in thin air, or something along those lines, and you really need to optimize for weight. Now, if you add up all three of those together, you end up with 950 kilograms, or just under 2,100 pounds of weight savings. So if you're not flying combat missions, feel free to take these things off and give your pilot that, that much extra engine power, because they don't have to haul around 2,000 pounds of useless dead weight. Gunner AI skill will default normally to 90%. I was messing around with it a bit here. Um, you can turn it up if you want to have superhuman AI with your guns in the back, or you can turn it down if you want to simulate somebody who's a little bit more human. Um, the next one, aircraft control priority. This is a new one that hasn't been implemented yet, but it's here because they're working on it now. This will be for multi-crew when it comes to the hip. It's coming to the Huey first, and then after that it'll come to the hip. Uh, these options should allow you to lock the controls to either the pilot or the instructor. I'm not sure who they're going to consider the instructor in this case, whether it'll be the pilot commander on the left or the pilot navigator on the right, but one of these will be for the left side, one of them will be for the right side. Uh, and equally responsible is what multiplayer servers will typically set it to, if I'm not mistaken. This will work much more like the trainers where you press J to request control. It'll also be interesting because this will be the uh, first, or I guess the second, time that uh, multi-crew has been attempted with a shared cockpit rather than the separate cockpits like the trainers have now. And then the last one is the NS430 Allow, and that's for the Garmin GPS knockoff unit you can buy and install on here. If you find that radio navigation and Doppler navigation just aren't meeting your needs, there is this little GPS unit you can put in and configure and guide yourself around with that. But if you're trying to do a training mission where you're teaching someone the Doppler nav or the radio nav, you don't really want them to use the GPS nav to just skip over that entirely, do you? So you can turn this off. So let's have a quick look at the helicopter cockpit. It's installed on the pilot navigator side, disallowed. So that's all your options for the HIP in the mission editor. Sadly, these are mission editor only. And in multiplayer, you'll typically find that everything is just enabled and on because you don't really know what the person's going to end up doing. So even if you're just flying logistics and you're staying way away from any kind of combat, you'll probably still be stuck with the armor and the half doors and the hard points, even if you're not using them. It would be nice if that was something you could do with the ground crew and have them take that stuff off on the fly, but for now it's limited to mission editor only. So try to think ahead when you're building your missions, what does the helicopter pilot actually need, and would it benefit them to take some of these things off? All right, I hope that made sense. Um, if I missed anything, if I got anything wrong, please let me know, and I'll see you guys next time.